Hey, what's up YouTube? Hutch with Hutch Boat Farms here. Today, we build a router sled. So about a year ago, I visited my local hardwood store and saw these two beautiful walnut slabs. They were book matched. I thought they'd make a perfect table at some point, so I couldn't pass them up. I brought them home. They've been sitting in my shop for about a year now, and now I need a way to flatten them. So today I'm building a router sled so I can flatten those two slabs and make a dining room table out of them. So all the extruded aluminum that I used in this router sled, I purchased from Granger online. I will uh, put links to each of the components in the description of the video. So essentially this router sled's built out of four components, all purchased from Granger. I've got three inch angle aluminum, both here on the rails and here um, on the router slide part. One inch aluminum tubing with the channel built in and I have a quarter inch flat stock aluminum here that attached to the router. Uh, the router I purchased from Rockler Woodworking, it's an awesome little router if you, actually it's not very little, it's three and a quarter horsepower router, but it's really easy and simple to use because I can, you know, adjust my height uh, and depth of cut right here on the top of the router, really simple. Uh, and it's very powerful. So it works well for, you know, slinging the big heavy flattening bit. But all I did was attach eight foot long angle stock to each side. Here I can flatten about a 24 inch wide slab, which worked great for me just because both my slabs were about 20 inches or so. Uh, and then I took uh, another four foot section of three inch angle uh, aluminum, attached these little wheels that I purchased from amazon.com, attached those wheels with rivets on both sides, top and the sides to help it slide nice and easy up and down the rails and then used some bolts, nuts and bolts, to attach the square tubing to the slide guides. And then here you just have uh, the flat stock that slides up and down in the channel tubing. So it uh, worked pretty well. I did make a few adjustments. Uh, one thing I think going forward I like to do is make it easier to be able to adjust uh, the width of table it sits on. So the nice thing, like I have a centipede table that I could put some uh, plywood on top of and, and cut up to or flatten up to a 46-ish uh, wide slab uh, if I put it, if I attach this all to another table. So pretty simple, pretty versatile. Um, all in all, I've got about 200 bucks into it, not counting the uh, route, router itself. Um, so yeah, I think it worked pretty well. Uh, I've got uh, those slabs are some epoxy poured in them already. That'll be an upcoming video as well. So the first step of this process is actually to clear off all the epoxy, glue, etc., on my table. This is a multi-purpose table. I use it as assembly table, outfeed table, and now it's actually going to be part of the router table. So to get flat slabs, I need to start with a flat surface. So that's what I'm doing here. The next step is to attach my router sled rails to the table itself. Here I'm just measuring out even spacing between each screw that will go into the side of the table and hold the rails. The length of the rails is something I would probably change if I was to do this again. I used 8 foot long 3 inch angled aluminum and if I was to do it again I'd probably use 10 foot long and you'll see later in the video why I'd do that. So I'm measuring for equal distance between each hole and then I'm also using a center punch to make a little dent in the aluminum so when I go to drill the hole out my bit won't wander.
Here I'm using my router adapter to line up where exactly the holes need to go in my flat stock that will attach to my router. I drill holes all the way through the aluminum and then I come back with a Forstner bit and countersink some holes for the bolts to sit in. This is a great way to ruin a otherwise good Forstner bit uh, and probably a technique I would not recommend. After this, I then drill the hole for the center part of the router and I used that half inch or 5 8 inch bit and this ended up not being a big enough. Uh, later on I had to make a bigger hole because the arbor itself from the router would not go through that hole which then uh, limited me on the depth of cut I could make. Now I cut down the four foot long piece of angle stock to two 14 inch pieces, and these will be part of my rail guides. I bolt the rail guides to the square tubing on each side, and then I rivet the wheels uh, to the rail guides so it can slide up and down. Now you can see me at work here, and it actually works pretty well. It makes for a smooth operation when flattening these slabs and I like it because it's very simple to move left to right which you can see I'm doing more left to right movement here which is cutting with the grain from what I can tell I don't know exactly if this is the correct way to do it it just seemed like the best way for me it made pretty quick work of flattening these slabs and it did a good job but it did create a ton of sawdust and I do need to make sure I get my dust mask on I'm thinking about looking into the AirShield Pros, wondering if any of you guys have used those and what your opinion of them are. They look funny, but if they make me feel better at the end of the day of working in the shop, they might be worth it. Here you can probably start to see why I said I'd go with 10 foot rails instead of 8. This slab is about 7 feet 9 inches long, and you can see I can't cover the whole span on my current eight foot rails. So what happens here is I flatten everything down low enough to where I think it will get the rest of the slab. I unscrew everything, slide the slab down, and then finish it on the end. Just an added step that I really don't need, so I may trade up at some point to some 10 foot rails so I don't have to do this. Now I'm cleaning up the end piece, making sure it's the same thickness and flat with the rest of the top slab, and then I'll turn it over and start on the other side. A quick check with the straight edge just to make sure everything seems flat uh, and so far it looks pretty good. Now to the other side. I'm shooting for about two inches thick in total. Uh, this slab actually started out at two and three quarters inch thick uh, so it was a pretty thick slab which is why I've got so much sawdust in my shop right now. Uh, but yeah shooting for about two inches thick anything over that seems a little bit overkill on a tabletop. So this is where I end up being limited on my depth of cut because the arbor can't actually travel through that flat stock that the router is attached to. So I had to make that hole bigger uh, to get back to work so I could cut deeper. Another thing I may do down the line is try to come up with some type of way to do cord management. I had to constantly move the cord to make sure I didn't actually uh, cut it with the router. Uh, so maybe something overhead could help me in that area. And that's one of the two slabs complete. On the second slab, I actually added this three quarter inch piece of plywood underneath the slab just to raise it up a little bit more. 
This makes it a little easier for me to make deeper cuts on the slab. So as you can see here, I'm wearing my dust mask, but I'm no longer wearing my safety glasses, which is not a good idea, but they keep fogging up on me. So what do I do? I go out and try to find a solution. So I steal my wife's swimming goggles. Uh, yeah, they're pink and purple. Uh, and use them in conjunction with my dust mask to see if I can keep them from fogging up and also keep from getting dust in my eyes or my lungs. Overall, this actually did work. Uh, they fogged up a tad, but uh, not nearly as bad as the safety goggles. After I had each side of both the slabs flattened, I then went over them with my Festool Rotex sander and just tried to smooth everything out a little bit with 60 grit and remove the router lines. Here's a sneak peek of the slabs after they've been flattened and joined together. You can see here how the dining room table is kind of going to look and I actually sprayed it down here so you could see the grain. The table will be the next video, so hopefully you guys can tune in and watch that one as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you can get updates on my future videos. And don't forget, faith, family, future, build yours. See ya.